Good morning. Bon dia. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. I am really happy, proud, honored, and overjoyed for having Yvonne Guevara with us. I'm not going to be very long in introducing her, among other things, because she doesn't need uh, many introductions. Lots of people know a lot about her, including her work, uh, Longing for Running Water, and many other uh, masterpieces of work uh, of her hands. I'm just going to say, for those who do not know her well, that she is an eco-feminist theologian and author from Brazil, working as a consultant for grassroots women groups in Brazil, and uh, silenced in 1996 by the Vatican. Uh, her silencing consisted mainly of forcing her to do something that she wanted to do anyway, a PhD in philosophy, so she, in theology, so she did her uh, doctorate in theology at the Catholic University of Louvain, and being a pontifical university, the same pope that silenced her lifted her silence after her uh, dissertation was concluded in one of his universities. So without further ado, uh, here is with you all uh, Yvonne Guevara. Welcome. Obrigada. Thank you. Thank you, Otto. I am here because of the invitation of my friend, Otto Maduro. I, I can't resist to her, to his invitation. We work together in the CESEP in Sao Paulo, long time, and we met at True University too. The title of my conference is Knowing the Human and Knowing the Divine for the Human. Perspectives from vulnerable corners of today's world. I will begin with a small introduction. My first point will be a kind of sociological religious analysis. I am not sociologist, but I can do it. And my second and third point will be more a theological perspective from an ethical construction of Christian faith. As all we know, religion is a social institution from humans and for humans with all the constitutive contradictions that human beings brings. Given this, we humans, we are the creators of our beliefs, including what we call divine, our gods, or God. One extraordinary particularity of human beings is to be able to transform subjective fears, needs, values, hope, into objects of belief and worship then we can transform them and at, as things outside of our human finite universe and give them power on us. These imaginative entities are then able to control our lives, ask for sacrifices or help us in daily life. It is part of our symbolic and creative power regarding our life and the life of others. Religious beliefs still have a special power on the individual and group lives in Latin America. In spite of the present apparent decadence of religious patriarchal institution, I have to add that when we want to reflect on these issues, we are always on moving ground. 
in a kind of fluid knowledge, trying to capture something that is beyond of our simple and limited perception. At the end, our work reveal more about ourselves and our time than the past or the same, uh, the, pre the, the present that we are interpreting. All our questions and answers to why religion is important or what is its role in human life have diverse and limited responses. The complexity of our knowledge references and limited perspectives shows that we are in a place of renewed interpretations, not only for the believer, but especially for the scholar of religious, religions. We can share only perceptions, points of, of view, and fragile theories. Because of that, my presentation is not scientific in the sense of being ruled by scientific anthropological laws or theological truths, or according to different authors. I am presenting intuitions, personal questions, feelings, doubts, as well as emotions and descriptions of what I learned, observing, reading, thinking regarding religious manifestations in the limited present of Latin American time. I recognize also that I am in the, the moving ground of religious beliefs, sometimes inside it and sometimes outside, looking at it as an object that I can admire, describe, or criticize. It is a very attractive and uncomfortable position because I am exposing my beliefs mixed with what I think are the beliefs of others. My aim is to propose some reflections as a small contribution to today's human living together. I believe that religion in spite of its contradictions and oppressed aspects, is a privileged space to capture the vulnerability of human life and creativity of human wisdom. First point. I want to make clear in what sense I am using the expression vulnerable corners of today's world. Inside the vulnerability as a condition of all living beings, we know that there are some people and individuals that are more vulnerable to death, more exposed to destruction, as well as to specific forms of injustice and violence. It is this special vulnerability that touches my body mind and invites me to reflect on it. They challenge me for a different understanding regarding some of the existential questions of human beings. I want to remain in an anthropological and social perspective, knowing the limits of it. From this perspective, the most vulnerable is a person or a group that are living a very special moment of suffering because of their condition or because they are segregated or oppressed by other groups. We know very well the history of poor populations and all sorts of exclusions they can bear over the world. We are aware on how much religions served and hurt their lives. We know particularly life vulnerability of violated or raped women as well as children's life. We are constantly menaced with, with wars and the high production of all sorts of weapons. 
in the century also we are conscious about the vulnerability of the planet with the complex ecological destruction coming from human greed. These exposures of life are risks present everywhere and especially in Latin American culture where re religion and particularly Christian tradition are melded with the history of our people inside their different cultural traditions. I want to try to explore this universe of relationship and complexity from the present time, including my references to the past. From this place, I will be using the expressions mass society and religion mass society to try to share my present concern related to the subject of my presentation. By mass society as ours in Latin America, I want to underline ideas developed and inspired by different analysts like Hannah Arendt and Edward Shields. Their ideas are still widespread among us and I am reinterpreting them in a particular context. Mass society is a term used to describe modern societies in which traditional forms of association, as well as traditional forms of, having, of living together and educate for values have declined. Traditional forms where the traditional large families, rural or urban communities, class organizations, unions, political parties, ethnical traditions, religious collective worship, and others in the same perspective. All these forms are no more as they were in the past. They are not a strong way of living together, and they are not giving a clearer identity and ethical parameters for people. In the past, these organizations and groups were more connected among them. The large population that was not integrated to the center values of society, capitalistic society, felt supported and helped in their different needs. Religion had a very special place in it because of their capacity to integrate people and to deal with different social and individual needs. These groups were struggling for their dignity because they had not access to the goods and rights of the elite. As mass society develops a large integration of all citizens and capitalism takes in Latin America different forms to try to integrate more people by bank credits and different politics and cultural initiatives that open to global economic and cultural participation, traditional references became weak. In mass society, new forms of being related are coming and incorporating people that were outsider in the past. In Brazil, for instance, in spite of our complex social uh, conflicts, we are talking about the new low middle class, which is all the people that, that uh, lives with social programs offered by the government. They enter from their way in the consumerist society and feel the benefits of it without any critique. From this perspective, also, we have to observe that the growing of big cities produced a new organization of human space and culture. We can see, for instance, the growing of very small spaces from housing, 
for housing, sorry, for housing and a new configuration of the living together. Families coming from countryside have very small places to live in big cities. This means that the signification of being at home, eat at home, sharing home space, celebrating at home is no more the same than the past. They have to be out of their home to be with friends and also relatives. They have to be out home to have some private life. Meetings, big celebrations, and now are now out of home and out of the home table of family. Home is the place only for strict, essential things, as sleep, take a shower, and keep personal goods. As a counterpart, new big temples, as well, big places for meetings and parties, big markets, big restaurants and auditoriums for different activities are being improved to the living together. We can be with our friends at the same time than others, but in a more anonymous way and ignoring the life of other groups. Big temples reap place churches or chapels in different neighborhoods and open to a new religious culture. Each one is invited to choose what is the more convenient for him or her and this new situation and in this new situation, sorry, old common traditions of families are almost forgotten. In mass society, the population of a country or a city became an in undifferentiated mass, relatively impersonal. We are all moving, living and arriving in the frenetic contemporary world. We talk, for instance, about people decision, but what people are deciding and what is the decision that they can take, for instance, in the big temples? We can observe that this population, or what we call people, can be preyed upon by all sorts of manipulation of unscrupulous politicians or religious leaders. They can be the prey of old political ideologies in order to restore ancient privileges. The criticism of the rationalism of the early 20th century seems to be less present today. We are taken by emotions or by the need to think together or by the need to have an answer to our individual problems and needs. We are still good people but different. Today, mass society is a big vulnerable corner. And inside it, there are layers of thousands of more vulnerable and diverse corners. And why is it a vulnerable corner? It is a vulnerable corner because the place for freedom is replaced by the idolatry of consumerism. The place of a simple happiness is replaced by a continuous noise of advertisement to buy new things and a renewed continuous frustration. Faith is replaced by emotions and a superficial happiness. The food that we eat is contaminated by poison, and so on. We breathe pollution. Where is the place of religions in this new culture? What are its functions? 
in a pluralistic society without precise ethical references of behavior, those who seem to offer stable references can succeed. A new presence of institutional religions is growing among us and giving an alienated reference to people. They do, they do not invite people to think, but only to leave religion in the big celebrations and in an individual relation to a powerful, powerful God that has many desires. They supply those religions, they supply the necessity of having security and an explanation for the complexity, the cru cruelty, and the beauty of the world. They develop their preaching frequently in a dualistic cosmovision, which is very simple to understand and accept. They supply the necessity to develop a historical hope even if it is an individual hope linked to find a job or to be healed from a disease or to buy a car. As capitalism invites individuals to be consumers of material goods, religions invite the same consumers to individual spiritual gifts that are perceived and received materially as things given by God there is a kind of intimate relationship among religion and the present capitalistic economy. The same that we said in the past is true today. The central figure is always the pastor, in general, a male pastor that presents himself as an apostle of Jesus or a minister of God to interpret his deep will and invite to conversion. The believer is only an instrument and a witness to show the power of the pastor who is identified with the power of his God. He is always repeating that God has the power, that all miracles came from the power of God, that God is being glorified by the healing or by the construction of new temples, and finally, by the gratitude of the believer. Now, in the city of Sao Paulo, uh, pastors are taking money to build the new Jerusalem temple. Pastors used to read texts of the Bible, particularly the Old Testament, taking one verse or other that can confirm their own position. Religion becomes a sort of merchandise sold by the God of the pastor of a precise church, which is a national and international church. This very complex religious relationship are not critique of the economic and social structures maintained by humans' will, but take the world as something done since the beginning of the creation. Ideas regarding creationism are restored from cosmological and anthropological dimensions. Miracles are spread in a very individual and impressionist way. God doesn't allow suffering, but they came from the devil and an entity struggling against God and his creatures. All this came again. They restore the ancient dualistic Manichaean logic of the two powerful beings struggling to conquer the world and each person. Pastors ask the believer to show publicly pictures of the disease or the wound that was healed. Crying, tears, and a high level of emotion involve all people that are witnessing the miracle. A new emotional experiences replace what we know about analytical reason and coherence also inside religious experiences. 
This is a method improved every day to regulate the life of a very important part of Latin American population. Also, these pastors promote political conservative candidates that are presented as saviors for the people. We have to admit that they have a very good audience, especially from poor people, middle class people in ascension, and particularly from women. On another side, there is a considerable spread of cosmic and mystical groups with a particular interpretation of Eastern traditions. These groups are especially composed by middle class women and some men coming from Christian tradition and very disappointed by religious institutions because of their patriarchal and anthropocentric perspective. They create some webs among them and have regular meetings exploring new cosmologies called scientific approaches, meditations with a Buddhist inspiration and a kind of holistic perception of earth in the interdependence reality. They refuse to reinterpret Christian tradition and affirm that it is impossible to change it to a more inclusive and interdependent perception of life. They are sometimes closed circles in spite their discourses of openness. They have lots of books and newspapers spread in different bookstores. Pentecostal tradition, as it is developed in Latin America, as well as cosmic tradition, come originally from the United States and spread in Latin America with local cultural colors. Maybe for United States, this is more uh, stronger in the 60s and 70s, but now it's very strong in Latin America. Ethical religious perspective, as it was developed in the 70s by liberation theology, seems to have a very low development in our days. The authority of Christian churches was the guarantee that the way of liberation from social and just structures was the will of God and was strongly present in the gospel. Less than 40 years later, this guarantee doesn't work as in the past. The Latin American context, as well as worldwide context, is not the same, and Christian groups do not work enough to reread or recreate Christian ethical traditions following the challenges of our days. Finally, I can say that it is a more individualistic Christian religious approach that is spread among us. The main Christian interpretation for today, always considering some exceptions, is that each believer is worried individually by his or her problem and is asking for healing for him or for herself. As you can see, I am making a distinction between faith and religion. Faith is a renewed bed for the dignity of life in, a, in its daily complexity, in its individual and collective dimension. Today, most churches go back to past theological securities and others take an individualistic way of salvation of what they call salvation. This is a small tableau of why, what I perceive. 
Maybe, especially for women, a question arises in your minds. What about feminist theology? Feminism, as well as feminist theology, is considered by these churches as coming from the devil or as betray a betrayal of the true Christian doctrine. Feminist the theological approaches have not a real citizenship inside Christian institutions in Latin America. These institutions do not have any interest to know and diffuse them as a new expression of human rights in the light of Christian faith. Because of that, most feminist theologians, especially those who work with social gender justice, in a collective and plural way are rejected. They are considered as producers of heretical content in the path of the present Christian life. In the intellectual milieu, public universities, as well as in student milieu, the declining of religion is a growing phenomenon. phenomenon. Most of them are looking for ethical improvement in different ways without connection with any institutional religion. It seems to me that mass society as well as mass religion today is not searching for alternative ethical and critical approaches in a collective way. They need solutions for their individual problems and comfort in being and singing together. They need solutions and leave to the establishment the responsibility of keeping the ordered disorder of our society. Their political projects seems, seem to be the same of capitalist market over the world. They need to know only what can help them in that moment to be more and more integrated in the production of mass capitalistic society or in a kind of esoteric group that respond to their spiritual individual needs. All of these aspects are a big challenge for those that are still worried by social and environmental justice in our worldwide relationship, or for those that want to go beyond of the lies that sustain our global world. The second point. Knowing the human is a process of exploration without end of an unknowing and knowing reality. It includes us and the world as objects and subjects of the same process. It is at the same time limited to our incapacity to know all aspects of, of our knowing and it is open to our extraordinary capacity to appropriate knowledge as a kind of food that we can't stop to eating. Knowing is a fundamental and constitutive form of nurturing our own being. We have different ways of knowing as well as being objects to be known. For some people, this now will be theological. For some people, theology is a particular expression of human knowledge that has the pretension to translate in words a fate regarding a connection between all beings and a creator called God. This being, or primal energy, or absolute goodness, is captured by some humans conscious of the limits of their perception and discourse. 
They pretend that the theological discourse can give us meanings for life and ethical laws or directions for a common living together on earth. In theocratic regime, this, this works. Because of that, most theologians think their religious tradition are related to an, to an ethical vision of the world. This vision presupposes a historical and a beyond history possibility of a world without injustice, a world where we overcome evil and all sorts of pain and sorrows. Traditional theology works with the fact that the mysterious good God is the guarantee of this deep human desire expressed in different ways. And the good God will respond in different ways to the human desire of his creature. For from this belief, some representatives of traditional theology introduce a sort of particular rationality that makes religious faith more import important than human reason. In, in opposite of them, others, I, I identify myself in this position, others believe that reason is absolutely connected to faith for them, a, for them, religion is a practical and existential problem. Because of that, some theologians tried since the Middle Ages, we are in a tradition, an old tradition, tried since the Middle Ages to show that religious beliefs are not platonic ideas, but have to do with our daily life. They propose that Christian faith is an existential experience beyond a dogmatic theoretical reason. It is a way of living together, respecting our differences. From the past until the present, we can observe that Christian tradition opens multiple ways to perceive what we call mystery of God in Jesus. I want to stress again this idea. Being related to God or being close to God is first of all being close to human beings and making them sisters and brothers. It is a new way to be related to the divine and this is a very difficult way of course a very difficult way to love one another, to be friends and not enemies, to, be, to go beyond violence and murder of sisters and brothers. In this perspective, Christian life became a form of humanism that benefits all sorts of ethical relationship. However, this paradigm doesn't work in a hierarchical society, still very connected to the power of kings or emperors or their substitutes. substitutes. We know how much Christians still keep an imperial image of God and of their religion and assimilate Jesus to the same model in spite of the multiple intents of restoring the original message. I call you friends. My comment is to love one another, which is very simple. Since the last dec dec or complex, since the last dec dec decades of the 20th century, some theologians, women and men, from different countries are doing theology in a humanistic view without the metaphysical God and without a metaphysical hope. We are dealing with other categories that allow us to do theology 
outside some traditional parameters. In fact, we are doing an anthropological and cosmological theology that means a particular way of justifying our searching for freedom, justice, and common good. We are talking about a horizontal transcendence that allows us to discover that the other is different than me and it gives me an experience or allows me to taste transcendence in the limits of my own being. But this is very important. It's not transcendence in the sense of the goodness of the other, but transcendence as an, as an experience that the other is different and mysterious to me, and that we need each other to be alive. The other is not only a pleasant presence, but a challenging one. It is a disturbing presence, asking me or talking to me in different languages that I do not want to hear. It is an experience that makes me feel that all others and me, we are transcendent to one another. Say transcendence is not living it in a positive way, but it is a perception that the other it's, is always in my way. And because of that, we have to try to live together. The other human, animal, vegetable, sea, rivers, is, in a sense, my heaven and my hell. It means that I and we, we can build a good or a violent relationship among us. My professor in Belgium, Adolphe Guéchet, uh, from Louvain, writes that in Christian tradition, we can, for sure, put God in parentheses. That means that we can act as God may not exist. We have to act following our own resources and possibilities, honestly. And again, as God may not exist. Because of that, the neighbor is very important in the way to understand Christian love. The neighbor, the poor, the marginalized, the other different than me, all of them are in a sense my God and also my enemy. If we still use the word God, it's by tradition, it's only in my way, a symbolic word or a pleonasm to express an ethical behavior because all has to do with human being. In fact, God is a plural word with multiple meanings for plural experiences. As you know, it is very hard to describe other religious experiences without judging them or more precisely without showing its difference regarding my own perspective. Each one of us is the center of his or her own knowledge and experience. I am very aware of that in spite of my critique regarding religions in the present Latin American world, or in spite of my desire to see human beings more responsible for their personal and collective life. 
Because of that, considering my profound respect for the, the diversity of beliefs also inside Christian traditions, I dare to say that the words God and theology as churches are still using them, are words without meaning for many people, and are words that can be traps for many people. It is in that perspective also that the philosopher, also my teacher, Paul Ricoeur, said that God died in Jesus. Or in other words, God died when human love one another. Or the vertical transcendence of God, the metaphysical God, died in Jesus, in us, and for us. Following this perspective, Christianity has to do with human being rediscovering its humanity and earthly interdependent condition in a diverse, continuous process in different cultural spaces and times. This means that religions, theologies, and believers have, I know that it's easy to say have, but I say, have to change their paradigms. And if they change them, they have to open to new anthropologies and new ways to share power and goods among us. This is a new call of human faith for a common human responsibility regarding the life of each human being and all beings of our planet. Because of that, we have to ask again about the plural meaning of the vine for our time and recover faith in spite of institutional powerful religions. My last point. What kind of divine for our time? In the present century in Latin America, I am observing that in spite of a searching for individual freedom, we are back to a vision where the authority of God, Father, and Creator is restored by different Christian churches. No place for feminist or ecological theologies. A new metaphysic Stressing a superpower of God without a critical reflection is back. It shows that we are afraid of sisterhood. We are afraid of sisterhood and brotherhood that can emerge every day from different groups struggling for justice and can menace the religious establishment linked to political and economical establishment. Small groups trying to build new relationship and recovering ethical religious traditions could be dangerous and are dangerous to the established system and can be persecuted and are persecuted. Their very existence affirms that other ways of living are possible, and these ways depends more on us than of the image of the imperial god or all sorts of gods with their representatives. Each one of us felt better or comfortable in a kind of relationship that we call God or transcendence. This understanding is supported by, by the way that we act in society. Frequently, people depending on others or people with too much money and power love powerful 
images of God. Love ordered religion. They feel comfortable repeating old religious traditions with, without understanding them because they seem powerful and able to control human relationship as they want. It is inside this large growing religious context that I and other women and also men, we are drawing new ways to re-examine Christian tradition and open a dialogue from our time and our choices. I am proposing the possibility to spread groups issued from Christian tradition that develops the idea of sisterhood and brotherhood beyond God the Father or the omnipotent and almighty God. It is neither atheism nor theism. It is beyond these categories, musty smell it, that we rediscover relatedness among us as a sacred category, relatedness as a sacred category. In spite of our conscience that we are related and interdependent among us, this position certainly cor corresponds to another way to live in our countries and on earth. It corresponds to another way to way to make politics and organize economy. It corresponds to another way to live and understand what we call traditionally as human salvation. From this new perspective, we try to go beyond a kind of immediate answer present in most religious, which is that God will take care of us or God will save us from hunger, anguish, loneliness, and so on. The new perspective developed especially by some feminist and eco-feminist theologians stress the wake up of human solidarity, of human friendship, of human sharing our goods and joy, as well as our difficulties out of the institutional limits of patriarchal religions. We are talking also about an earth salvation from human beings as a capacity inside us and beyond us. The patriarchal way from where we transfer this capacity to an abstract being or to people in heaven reveals our intense disdain of human being possibilities and earth possibilities. I, I repeat, the patriarchal way from where we transfer our capacity, our human capacity to an abstract being or to people in heaven, the saints, reveals our intense disdain of human being possibilities and of earth possibilities. We still do not, ha we still do not love human being as a neighbor or a friend, and we do not believe earth as a living being. We do not believe in human love or our capacities to search truth and justice. We look to human beings with less confidence than to the image of a powerful God that we believe without any real proof that can love me. What kind of human experience is present in this behavior? So common among us in Brazil. In fact, no one saw God, and this is a good point for our limited imagination. We imagine him first. 
first of all him and we give him all attributes that we praise in a human being. We believe in our imaginative construction in his capacity to give us what we ask, but we do not believe deeply in our capacity to be good neighbors, good people to one another and earth citizens. Human history gave us more proofs of violence and greed than, our, than of our love and solidarity, especially when we pay attention to the number of wars, conflicts, and above the persistent hunger of food and dignity in the world. Because of that, it is for most people easier to believe in a mysterious will of God than in trying to help one another and build politics for the dignity of all. We prefer to wait that God or a hierarchical political authority do things for people than people for themselves. Traditional myths about the origin of evil shows that brothers always kill brothers, like Cain and Abel. The beginning of human history following the Bible is a murder of brothers. The, be the beginning is envy, the desire to keep privileges and be more agreeable to God and to authorities than other. Because of that, we prefer not be adults and still be individually children of God. We prefer to deal with our passions and with our capacity of dialogue in a hierarchical way. We prefer to be submitted to the order, orders of the Father God, ask him directly and wait from him directly or from the representative of religious power. Today we are again inside the dependence of the father, father market, father in the heaven and of his representatives. Not wanting to grow up by our forces, but being submitted to a powerful individualistic system that give us security. This religious system is also reproduced, as we know, in political and economic system. All is connected with all. All is dependent of all. Our faith has to do with our historical conditions. Again, the question, what kind of divine we need in our present? And my answer, the question is not about God. The question is not about divine. The question is about human beings, about the urgent necessity to try to learn to love one another in order, in order to live to recognize the similarities of our bodies, of our breathing. The question is to learn every day how to share the benefits of knowledge, of science, of housing, of eating, and having good health care. The question is not the unbearable happiness or the eternal life in a pure abstract space, but the right to live this life long or short with dignity. Maybe I am still in a naive belief in the possibilities, the ethical possibilities of human being. I am aware that this belief is not 
appreciated by people that have to maintain maintaining functioning economical capitalistic market. But I am there, I am there with others in the margins of official beliefs, trying to be faithful to our possibilities of creative and beautiful world for all. It's my utopia. It is still my hope and the energy that moves me. And it is because of that that I am still working with the gospel of Jesus. There is inside it an extraordinary energy of new myths of sisterhood and brotherhood that can be recreated, reread for our time as inspiration, as poetry, as important paradox that provoke and invite us to think about the gift of our lives. I don't have a conclusion. My questions as well as my reflection when to stay open it, seeking with all of you what matters today and what we can change in our lives for a better and de decent world for all. Thank you.